Hello, hello, and welcome to the Bellingham Real Estate Podcast. I'm Paul Balzotti. I'm here with Julia Menke. Welcome, Julia. Thank you, Paul. And today we are talking about affordable housing. We have an expert on affordable housing here and a real estate veteran. And we're going to cover your background. We're also going to cover different affordable housing programs that are out there, what we think can be done, what is being done, and just in general, go talk about affordable housing. So let's get to kick it off with you. So what do you, I don't know what you have there, but let's, I was going to ask you, so uh, what is your, how long you've been in real estate? And how long have you been working in affordable housing too? But what do we have? What is it? What do we got? Well, I just wanted to bring uh, a Valentine's flower for you and Andrea. Oh, that's very and, sweet. Um, to thank you for your heart oh. and for what you you do for our community. And, you know, I think John L. Scott is a huge advocate of community and in so many different ways. And so I wanted you to have a Valentine flower. That's very sweet. Yeah. Well, let's just, we'll just put it right here okay. for now. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. It's very sweet. So you've been with, you've been with John L. Scott for three plus years, but how long you've been in real estate and how long have you been working in affordable housing? But that's very sweet. Thank you. So I uh, grew up in real estate. I'm a third generation real estate uh, person. My grandfather was a developer and I grew around, I grew up running around in the back of his Lincoln Continental with the building plans falling on my head. Nice. So then my mother was a broker and um, I came into it here about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, prior to that, I was uh, 15 years doing commercial. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as the afford affordable housing yeah. side of things, I started um, with Habitat for Humanity for about uh, six months, kind of revamping the retail store mm -hmm. uh, here in Bellingham, the ReStore, they call it. Yeah. And um, putting putting them in the black in terms of their profitability. Nice. It's a fabulous experience. Yeah. And then um, now I'm working uh, in affordability with Whatcom Skagit Housing. Yeah. Okay, Whatcom Skagit Housing. And definitely shout out to Habitat for Humanity. We love Habitat for Humanity. We're going to touch on those programs as well. Um, but you are your realtor with us and you are wearing two hats because you're also with Wacom Skagit Housing. So talk to us about that. Talk to us about what do you do for Wacom Skagit Housing and tell me more about Wacom Skagit Housing. Sure. Happy to. So Wacom Skagit Housing is um, an amazing program that's been around for 45 years and I'm the executive director there. So um, I wear a bunch of hats there too. I also, in 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 a full-time capacity mm -hmm. of, of running that organization, I'm also helping people buy and sell right. homes here with John L. Scott. So um, sometimes I, I'm, my kids want to know where I'm at. Yeah. Like, where's mom? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> so, and, and, and so, so you're, you're, you have a big role with Wacom Skagit Housing. Talk to me about how that program works and then what you do in that, pro with that program. So, and it's obviously Wacom Skagit. Yeah. What, yeah. What exactly all is that you're what you guys is doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. So, um, it's a hidden gym. It's mm -hmm. really, um, truly that program that, um, can help families who are eligible, um, which means that they're somewhere between 50 and 80% of average median income for our area. Okay. Um, and so it's a way for them to put their best foot forward and work really hard to build a home, a community of homes, and, um, and realize home ownership. So is it only, so you're only doing, you guys are doing new construction? That's right. And then, and so basically, how many people on average are you guys working with at a time? And how does that work? Okay, so they make 50 to 80% of average income. Um, and then you guys are going in, do you find the land? And then do you partner with builders? Um, what, how does somebody qualify for a program like that? Kind of just dive a little bit more into sure, it. Sure, sure. So you think, think a little bit about it. Um, when, when we're working in real estate, residential, conventional yeah, side, yep. and we're a client comes to us, the very mm. first thing we, mm. we say is who's your lender, right? What is your financial situation like? So that's sort of how we start. So we start out by packaging loans through yep. USDA. So we qualify families, package their loans, and get them approved. We put them into a building group, and we work between eight and ten families 
at a time. Mm. And their commitment is to each other. So they're gonna they're gonna commit as a as a building program to building each other's homes over the next year. And Very we're cool. we're kind of like the technical advisor. So we're right there on the site. Yeah. And we're managing their money, the yeah. construction loans, we're buying all the supplies and we're showing them how to do it. Is this like the same street that they're all on, or could it be different lots in different oh, areas? No, they're right next to each other. They're so neighbors. you have to find a plat. That is that kind of the key too, is finding a plat of like a street where you could go in and do six homes at a time That's or something right. we, like that. We build neighborhoods. We build, we tend to buy, um, we hope we can buy finished lots. Yeah. Sometimes we end up having to buy land and develop the land. Yeah. And um, we work eight to 10 homes at a time. So they're side by side. And they uh, build each other's homes and they all get their keys on the same day. So in their, in, in their, they have to do, to qualify for the program, they have to put the work in, right? They have to put the work in. And man, how it's cool hard. for the, that's <laughs> hard. But yeah, especially if you're both working full time, finding yes. the time to get off work or to have one person who's not working or whatever and to be able to help build. I mean, you have to have subs, of course, for the technical things. So sure. they're helping, but they're helping with a lot of the just kind of labor. labor. Oh, yeah. Like they're out there excavating. They're building forms right now this week. Um, uh, they're, they're, um, helping with the foundations. They do all the rough framing. Mm. Um, they're up there putting trusses up on ladders in December. They're working. It's, it's, it's a, um, an amazing, amazing thing to see. Well, and then I would imagine that these families get super close. Like you, now you're moving in and now you all live in the same street and you all built each other's homes. And so what a great kind of neighborly kind of bonding experience. It takes community to a whole nother yeah. level. They watching yeah. out for each other. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it, it might even start out where it's such hard work and, and it might just be tolerating each other, but they're still committed <laughs> to building together. I guess that's right. That can go yeah. both ways. I, I mean, it's like you hear about people getting divorced, uh, building a house <laughs> together. I guess you could have some neighbors by the end of it who aren't, aren't bonding as well too. I guess yeah, that could yeah, go both ways. Yeah, they're still all supporting each other though. Yeah, and, yeah that's and, true. That's true. And they watch each other. Yeah. And they form community and a lot of them become part, they have to develop their own HOAs. Mm. And um, because that's part of the, part of the program is... Um, forming forming an HOA that's either part of what's already there or forming their own. That's neat. And so. we're going to touch on uh, community on land trust programs, which are have a really important place in affordable housing, like you've shared with me. And I know a little bit about Colson Community Land Trust. But what's super neat about this program is you mentioned that because they put in that sweat equity, with all that sweat work, when they own the home, once they own the home, they now own the home you're saying right like they there's no tie to it once they get the keys so if they yeah right that's right so because they committed to building their home they realize their equity immediately on the close of their construction loan when it converts to a mortgage and so that those appraisals are coming in right now um, because the housing market is so intense right now um, they're realizing somewhere between one fifty and one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars equity wow. upon completion. Wow! So uh, that's amazing. Really contributing an um, incredible amount to our community in terms of taxes, mm -hmm. excise taxes, um, um, impact fees, mm -hmm. um, jobs. It's it's really uh, the combined cumulative effort is amazing. Yeah, that's 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 great. So. Let's take a step back sure. before we talk about more of the programs. What are the biggest issues that you find with affordable housing in general? So not just so you're helping out with this one program, but everybody's trying to buy a house or sell and they're dealing with this. So what do you consider the biggest problems right now? Well, they're not special and they're not no. unique. Yeah. They're the same problems we're seeing everywhere with housing. And that's affordability is being impacted by supply. Mm -hmm. on many levels. So not only supply of, of land, affordable land, mm -hmm. but also supply of, of materials, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and the supply chain affecting all of the building materials that go into a home is, is definitely an issue. I totally agree. And, and you, you look at even the builders that are in town right now in Bellingham, if you talk to, or up in Blaine or in Ferndale, if you talk to any of them, even the people that have the land, the builders that have the land that would love to be building four or five homes at a time due to these supply issues that you bring up, that's 
around the whole country and not just with housing, with cars and with everything else, with all sorts of supply issues, they're essentially building one or two homes at a time instead of five or six homes at a time. And what does that mean? Now all of a sudden, well, they, without even them trying that the price of that, that individual home because of the scarcity of all the new construction is getting elevated, which affects affordability for everything. So, um, and the, the, the final thing I'd note on that is, is I looked at the statistics for, um, housing in 2006 through 2009, when we had the last housing boom, there was four or 500 homes being built a year in Whatcom County. Right now there's 60, 70 homes being built a year in Whatcom County. And that's slated to, to go up, but not to the degree it needs to. Sure. So you're absolutely right. This sure. applies and our the numbers issue. are down more in the, you know, 30 houses. We're building about 30 houses every two years. So, um, quite a, quite a lot of, I would say in, in, in Whatcom County, that's pretty significant. Yeah. But back to the supply thing, just as an aside, while we were building our last group, mm -hmm. our plywood went up 180%. Yeah. So way over budget. And right. then even if we could secure it, even if we could find it and get a bid on it, we couldn't get the truck. We couldn't get it delivered. So, uh, you know, think when, when, a project is stretched out like that where you're not getting your supply, your price goes up. Yeah. Because time is money. Right? Well, so, and, and you can't even get to the next group because you're you're taking longer on this group. So the next people in the wing that want to build, even through a program yeah. like yours, so whether you're going through an affordable housing program or you're just trying to buy a spec built, new construction built, everything gets it's delayed true. and inflated. And, and you just have to get creative and find ways to solve the problem. For example, yeah. on the last project, we couldn't get garage doors. Right. And they were eight months delayed. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like, how are we going to get final occupancy? So, I mean, these people need to move into their home. So we we just like built a temporary garage door with um, a built-in man door. Wow. And, and that was put in place until the garage doors can arrive, which are coming next week. Well, that's so wonderful. That's we're wonderful. finding ways to do it. Um, and, and I think that's just part of life, right, is just solving problems as they come. Well, I mean, I, I ordered a new garage door for my own house four months ago, and they told me it'd be four months, and I there's no sign of that door coming in. Okay. So garage doors, in particular, of everything What's are like the, the deal? worst. I don't know. How about fasteners? 500% increase on fasteners. So mm. I am putting new cabinets in my bathroom at home, mm. and I got the cabinets, but the slides never came. Oh, that's fun. So <laughs> just got to wait until the slides and the knobs show up and yeah. then we're in business. So yeah. it's happening. It, it's not unique, the supply issue. Right. But I don't want to forget your original question. And the other, I think another big issue or a big barrier mm -hmm. is resources. Mm -hmm. So the first one, supply, I would say, is a big issue. And then the second one is specific resources addressing the affordable housing. So- where can we pull those resources from? Where can we get down payment assistance? Well, and that was that was what I was going to touch on. This is the last question, and really the the biggest thing in this whole conversation is if somebody's listening listen to us this long talk about it, um, I I want to get down to what programs exist now, um, but then also what else do we do you think that as a as a government entity, but privately can be done to help with affordable housing. So Whatcom Skagit housing is one Colson community land trust. Um, you know, there's uh, habitat for humanity. There's those programs talk about a little bit more about those and the resources needed, but then also specifically like the loan programs and the different things out there that could help people. Sure. I think you named um, three, yep. three key players mm -hmm. in it. Um, also Madrona is another one. And then also private, Madrona, uh, Madrona, Development through Paul Schischler okay. is um, up and coming. And then there are private builders that are out there. That want to build affordable homes. They're, that yeah. is a specific product they're trying yeah. to they're trying to build. It's uh, limited square footage, affordable, you know, mm -hmm. a, a, a footprint and a and a budget that that at the end of the day is a product that is affordable. Mm -hmm. Challenging, but yes. Yeah. So talk about but specifically on the on the programs i know that there's if you're just buying a resale home there's usda um as a we it's a kind of a zero down or low down program and then there's a state bond uh, kind of down payment assistance program for first time home buyers 
talk to me about the loan program you guys use and how that could be applicable for home buyers. And then there is, there is there local funds coming in to help with that too. Yeah. Yeah. So trying to pull resources together. Yeah. Okay. So, um, our, our loan right now is a USDA 502. So there's, it's different than the, the standard USDA, yes. USDA 502. Yeah. Okay. And, and you have direct and you have guaranteed. Okay. So this is kind of like a hidden arm of mm. a program that's, that, that falls under, it's funny cause it's under, it's U S department of agriculture. Yeah. But it's it is a, random. <laughs> a very specific arm of it called self-help mm. and it's, it's geared toward rural. So it's, you never see this program in, I mean, this in, in urban areas, you see that in more rural areas. So for our county, that means that, that, uh, Bellingham is excluded. Mm. So we have to the be. The city limits of Bellingham. Yep. The city limits. Okay. Yep. But anything outside of city limits outside is Outside okay. of city limits. And that's limits. the same as the regular USDA program too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So they're focused on rural. Mm -hmm. And then I, I would say, um, a two, right, it, it, currently two and a half percent. Wait, sorry. What, what about Skagit County? Is there any city limit requirements in Skagit? Mount Vernon. Okay, Mount Vernon excluded. city limits in Bellingham, and then sorry, and then to, and then you were saying what was the next thing you were saying? Um, so the loan ba basic loan structure is no down two and a half percent, can be amortized over um, thirty three or uh, four hundred and fifty six months. So it can be depending on their financial situation and okay. how they fit in the eligible in the eligibility. You said no down, but then two and a half percent. What was the caveat there? Two and a half percent is the current rate on these loans. Isn't oh, two and a half percent interest rate. Yeah. So zero down two and a half percent. That's amazing. And then amortized out uh, flexibility with the amortization. Yeah. Plus um, subsidies at the end to match what they can pay. Unbelievable. Program. And this is the 502 USDA program. Yep. And so this is available for is it available strictly for affordable housing programs or it's, or, it's or, specific to um, probably income levels? It's specific. You, you need to be within 50 to 80 percent of average median income for our area. OK. And OK. So then with that, I know that Whatcom County has um, this. I don't know what if the city of Bellingham. I know that they're doing their own things to try to help with affordable housing. Does Whatcom County help with just specifically your program, or is that anybody who does the 502 program? How does that work? Yeah. So Whatcom County also has a fund um, garnered through real estate excise tax. Okay. And that fund is managed through the county executive's office and gets recaptured and goes back into that fund. And it's specifically targeted toward affordable housing, any program. That's great. In affordable housing. And... Um, and is even being expanded for not only um, the, the so we currently utilize twenty thousand dollars toward impact fees. Mm -hmm. um, That's on the new construction. Each home. Yep. Each home. So we're talking traffic, school impact fees, yep. and utilities. But now they've expanded that fund for development as well. Okay. So um, so that we can do some bigger things for affordability. So that's pretty exciting. So do they give, does Whatcom County, when they're when they're pulling money from excise tax and they're distributing it to, are they distributing it individually on each individual? Like if, so if I'm an individual borrower, can I qualify for a 502 and then extract some of those funds or are they specifically, and, and it's okay if you don't know this they're, for they're sure. They're specific to affordable okay, housing th programs. So they're, 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 they're giving that money to those programs so that they can use those however they need to, to keep the program affordable. And that it probably also includes Colson Community Land Trust. But not however they need to, very specific. Very specifically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Got curr it. currently those funds have to be paid directly to a municipality. Yeah. And they have to cover those impact fees. Yeah. So yeah. from a resources standpoint, it would be more resources and more awareness of the resources needed for these type of programs. Um, and then... You know, obviously, there's we could get into zoning, which we're not going to talk about too much today. Obviously, you could do different things with zoning to, you know, to have infill, to have, you know, to allow for more urban sprawl. There's there's a whole other debate on all of that. But sure. you think that the number one thing would be just the just adding on more resources is in. And you, when you say resources, you mean funding, right? Like from private or or government. That's right. Yeah. Because as the cost of land and the cost of materials increases, the gap becomes wider. Mm -hmm. And so we have to, we have to address that gap. Mm -hmm. So where, where, where is it going to come from? Yeah. So we're, we're going to need to look into, to, to kind of 
increasing the coffers. Yeah. So we have funds through community development block grants. We have funds through the Department of Commerce. Um, We need to look at all of these opportunities and including local resources. Yeah. And, And the more of that we have, the more able we are to help in this affordability topic. Well, and you're, and you're also, you're, you're lending a hand to people that are working, that are, you know, that are, they're positive, like stewards of the community. And so it's not, you know, if somebody's on like some political end of this, where they're thinking, oh, I don't, we, you know, affordable, I don't like all the handouts. This is really, these are hand up um, And they're recaptured, they're, and they're loans. Yeah, they exactly. They are being given, they're, they're being put in place to create the opportunity for the family to get into the home and then they're recaptured upon sale. It gets triggered mm-hmm. upon a sale or a refi to go back into the fund to help the next family. Yeah. So if you think about it, it's 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 just ways to solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Okay. So I think we've covered quite a bit. Um, I've learned a lot about Wacom Skagit housing and it's a fabulous program and really, really neat. You said you're, you guys are helping 30 families right now, which is amazing. Um, we definitely plug in Habitat for Humanity, Coalition Community Land Trust. And what was the last one you mentioned? Uh, Madrona, Madrona and then private builders. And then, and then, yeah. And then helping private builders use their resources and use a lot of the same techniques that you guys are using to pool resources together yeah. To just get creative, sure, and that is going to be the crux of how we can re- solve this as a community is just more and more of that, um, along with you know, and then the zoning changes. It that's a little harder to you know to to kind of we, we talked about. I talked to Hannah Cranny about additional dwelling units, um, how that can be that can be another little thing, and you can have you know add more multifamily. Sure. We, we talked about this now yeah, on the podcast on the horizon. Yeah, yeah, is in Phil and. Um, you know, creating multifamily housing units and zoning to allow for that so that you can I- I- increase density. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, but let's just be honest. Bellingham in particular is going to be really expensive to live in and that's not going to change. It's going to continue to be, it's a very desirable city mm-hmm. and we're close to see, we're jammed right in between Seattle and Vancouver, two of the more expensive places to live in the world or not in the world, but in the country. Yeah. And, um, but uh, still opportunities out there for people um, which is which is great. So Julia, you're a great realtor. You're a great advocate for your program. And if you want to reach out to Julia about buying or selling, or about Wacom Skagit Housing, please do. She's wonderful. Thank you for joining me today, Julia. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Cheers, guys. Mm-hmm.